Okay, so that is the first part. Uh, learning theories, I covered that very briefly, and I hope it's able to relate to some of your experience. Okay. And try to practice them, and to know more, just Google any of them. <coughs> Some of us, because of our bidang, you find that a hey, behaviorism what is still very important. Because uh, especially the medical doctors, certain procedures, you cannot be too creative to do it in your own style. <laughs> the standard procedure is you must do this first, second, you must do that, third, must do that. Because uh, Baru said under operation. <laughs> so they do step by step, and I can say, wow. It is they have a certain procedure. No creativity are not popular. See or not? So even though I say you might bring in creativity, but some vida na na bole. Right? So you know better. <laughs> I said, Dr. Edmund, creativity fully allowed. <laughs> Tomorrow you bring one your cancer. <laughs> and show our friends here. Uh, I went to his office the other day, sorry, uh, you don't mind, okay? He got all kinds of uh, goggles, okay? And then suddenly, you are actually in another world, <laughs> okay? You can touch this and touch that. Good show. Show you. And also augmented, which means uh, real world. You wear the spectacle, I can see something about you. <laughs> the moment your face is there, it, 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 it. I don't know my computer. He's a dangerous man, no? <laughs> the moment he wear a new spectacle, be careful. Right? <laughs> you can look at your face and they want to give me information about you. <laughs> it is augmented reality. It's super impose something in the real world. A lot of engineers. <laughs> okay. Now. Okay. So, just a learning theory. Now I'm coming into the world of uh, multimedia learning. Try to follow. Huh? <coughs> uh, Richard Mayer. Anyone uh, read about him before? Or did you the multimedia learning? So we are all at the same level. Uh, let's try to follow together. So for this, uh, I want to introduce to you a particular theoretical framework. Okay. This man is uh, Richard Mayer. <coughs> Any one of you uh, know about Richard Mayer? <laughs> Something continuing for this theory of multimeter learning? No. Okay. So we are all in the same frame view. Let's go through. <coughs> try, to, try to understand this. Okay. Now, according to uh, Richard Mayer, this is something at cognitive level. So our learning is actually what is happening in our brain. So here is a long-term memory. Whatever that comes in here is supposed to be remembered forever. The capacity over here unlimited. Here is our working memory. This is where whatever that is presented before us whether it is in words, whether it is pictures, whether it goes through the ear or the eye, these are the main two organs, main two sensory organs receiving the information that goes to the brain. So, example, uh, here, as we are speaking, okay, then we will go through the ear and then we will go through the working memory. And whatever that is going to be here, uh, there is something called selection going on. Sometimes, you know, there could be, uh, right now, okay, I'm the only one speaking. <laughs> but many times there are some other music or some other things around us. And many times uh, you might be selecting the wrong message going in. And hence, it will affect learning. You know what I mean? And uh, whatever that we look at, uh, in that image information, you will be 
you organize within the working memory, and then you come up in form of a pictorial model. Here will come up as a verbal model, you call it, and it will integrate together with whatever prior knowledge for new information. In this cognitive theory of multimedia learning, there are three assumptions. So, assumption number one is that something called dual channel. There are two separate channels, one is called the auditory and one is called the visual channel for processing information. So, when our students look at their laptop, okay, they are actually now looking at some text over there, they could be seeing some uh, video there. They could be listening to something. Else. So it's coming through actually the two sensory in. And this two channel, okay, the assumption is this this channel has a limited capacity. It is narrow. <coughs> so this channel it is a tube, okay, and it's not a narrow, and you can only allow certain amount of information, okay, whether visual or visual. So, think of that. And the assumption number three is that for active uh, processing, uh, learning is an active process of selecting, it's an active process of uh, organizing. And then integrating with higher knowledge. And here you come to new knowledge. <coughs> okay. So with the understanding of this three assumption, uh, a lot of experiments are now going on to okay, test out with regard to certain design principles and maybe how it matched with the cognitive theory of the So I just run through very quickly over here. Uh, they come up with something called coherence principle. Okay. Are you familiar with any of them? Example, coherence principle, people learn better when extra words, pictures, and sounds are excluded. And Dr. Liu Puri just said, this A I S S. Simple. And simple. Anything extra brings in the wow effect, but the wow effect may be a disruptor. It may even uh, be hard in learning. So, there's a more of a signaling principle. People learn better when cues that highlight the organization of the instruction material are added. So, you see, for example, I'm showing you using this uh, laser pointer. So it's a signaling that it's a feeling that. So sometimes very complicated diagram, and you're talking about it, the students will be lost. Where what should I be looking at? So if you use a pointer, you know, probably <coughs> redundancy, people learn better from graphic <coughs> duration than from graphic duration than constant text. Anything that's redundant, throw it away. So if I am uh, showing an animation about something <coughs> and I'm talking about it and also that this text over there, okay, the text become redundant because I'm already talking about it. So now you are expecting students to look at it, to listen to it and also to read. The eye is looking at the animation, to look at the text become redundant. Okay. And that much affect learning. Special uh, continuity principle. <coughs> People learn better when corresponding words and pictures are presented near rather than far from each other on the page or screen. So, any diagram that you present before the student, where do you label them? Near to the picture or you put it as a legend down there? It makes a difference. Okay. Temporal continuity principle. People learn better when corresponding words and pictures are presented simultaneously. So rather than talking about this and then turn to the next page where you are seeing the picture or you are talking about it, at the same time the picture is there, so there are several times simultaneously presenting it. This improves, actually uh, optimizes. 
Excel is a quick run through. Okay. Segmenting a principle will be better from multimeter lesson presented in user free segment rather than as a continuity. So, if a video is about three minutes, that's too long. Maybe okay. <coughs> you can cut it into one minute, one minute segment. Okay. And students will be able to see segment one, segment two, they can pause, rewind, go forward. Let there be a learner control over there in those segments. It affects the learning. Pre training principle, okay, when they know the new mechanism of the main concept. So, right now itself, I'm actually just exposing you some new terms. Probably all these are new terminologies. Okay, and this is part of something called pre training principle. So, as a new subject, I should go and a modernity principle, people learn better from graphic intervention than from animation and logic in text. Just imagine, just looking at the animation is moving, at the same time there's text over there, it's not. That will be this part of the modernity principle. Rather than the text being there, how about the narrating? Take away the text, just narrating. So there's maximum flow to the ear, maximum inflow to the eye. And this will go into the working memory, and that's where the number can be These are all very simple principles that people apply when, especially, you produce a book, you know, or uh, for little children, especially. They yeah, apply a lot of these principles. Multimedia principle people learn better from words and pictures than from words alone, naturally. Uh, personalization principle. You will learn better from multimedia lessons when words are in conversational style rather than formal style. Just speaking, you know, formally. Uh, as yesterday it was mentioned, you know, that when we sit before our laptop, it's so difficult to actually speak in a natural manner. <laughs> and that natural manner is actually the best way to convey our message to our students. Formally, somehow it does affect the student. Voice principle. Uh, people learn better when the relation in multimedia is spoken in a friendly human voice rather than machine voice. So there was a suggestion that yesterday, what you can say, your text uh, can be converted into speech by the computer. Uh, be cautious in using that because uh, it does affect learning. It's better to use your own personal voice. Uh, what is the reason? We will continue to discuss some of that. And the image principle, people do not necessarily learn better from a multimedia lesson when the speaker's image is added to the screen. So there's always a temptation, you know, because the camera is always there. So we will also let our, our narration together with our face. Some maybe, some maybe. These are some of the cognitive processing that takes place in a learner. This is a cognitive processing. For example, uh, something called extraneous uh, processing. And in this case, uh, we want to reduce anything that's extra. Because uh, that extra is a cognitive load upon our memory. So we are trying to reduce this. And the cause of this is poor instructional design. For example, you know, we are just talking about a particular machine, and for no reason, uh, for whatever reason, you bring in some kind of uh, rock music, you bring in probably uh, a Mickey Mouse, something up and down for whatever reason, maybe to attract attention, but that poor design okay, is what we mean by bringing the extra. That should be reduced. Okay, so, if we look at this, what should be reduced? Essential, in a representative essential material. So, for example, uh, certain dynamic processes, uh, for example, the cell division, uh, certain uh, chemistry uh, reaction going on. So, the, you, you have to show everything, you see. You cannot take away anything from that, and it's very complex. So, how could we actually uh, present that essential information? How could we manage it? So, for example, the cut that into segment. It's called managing it. Generative, so how could we increase uh, the motivation of the learner 
to continue to take the effort to continue learning from online without your presence. It's not easy. After three minutes, one minute, you will just do something else. So how do we maintain the motivation and increase the generality which has been So in summary, this is what Mayor said. People learn better from multimedia messages that are designed in ways that are consistent with how the human mind works with research-based principles. So now we are standing upon various attitudes of multimedia learning and we propose this particular model of our brain. And a lot of us have been done in this area. Just telling about this. Huh? Okay. This is the way that uh, we will approach it. Uh, prosecuting an educational video of questions related to cognitive growth. We are going to role play. My Purana Skaran. Okay? Uh, I'm going to call upon those who are accused of uh, violating the design principles. Okay? They are the accused. And you will be the jury. Okay? Each and every one of you. The jury. 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 So the jury. Okay? Uh, at every one point, after uh, oh, the prosecutor, of course, I'm the prosecutor. <laughs> so I'm a prosecutor. Okay? And then you be very objective. Okay? From uh, what you understand, from what is presented, then uh, not be biased. You will see whether you can do Okay. And from that itself, we will look it up. So, again, now as a jury, you must be uh, given the background concerning a certain truth. Okay. So, you have to understand it. And with that truth, objectively, you will uh, judge. People learn better from words and pictures than from words alone. Uh, this is the first principle. Okay? The rationale is that it takes advantage of the full capacity of the human mind for processing information. So, when we present the word and the pictures, so very simplistic one, of course, it can all come from the mind. But if it's complex picture, then we're saying that the word should be the data, so it also works. Then we bring in the flow through smoothly into the world. Example, I give you this text. <coughs> if you just read this, just read this. Try to figure out, visualize what is going on. How is the emotion? Only with green, red, blue, and yellow, and only sporting. What is this? I don't know what happened in the world, is that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now, if you present this text and talk about it in front of students, compared to, you also simultaneously show this. They are actually describing this. So, this is what we mean by uh, having the graphic to support the text. Appropriate graphic. But the way this is a real picture taken by my own, my own camera. <laughs> and one time I was in Mauritius, and in my hotel room, you know, I look at the ceiling, what is that? So colorful. <laughs> I wanted to capture it and bring it back to Malaysia. <laughs> Leo. A real house lizard. Same as our house lizard. You should go there and see what is this species. <laughs> okay, the trial by jury begins now. Okay, panel of jurors. Every one of you. The oath that you must take down. Please <laughs> decline together. I will not take the sincerity in the way that I will keep my true body by holding the right and the Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so your word is afterwards to be guilty or not guilty? <coughs> guilty. So, facts and evidences that you need to know. So, I will practice very quickly. <coughs> Affordances and 
in terms of uh, usage of video. So I'm looking now at the uh, video because we're going to produce a lot of videos for our presentation. So in this case, for example, videos are used according to Hunch 2015, which is a very good article. Uh, using record, establishing emotional connection, use for virtual trips, you know, you can take the video and then bring it back for discussion. Uh, able to manipulate uh, time and space, uh, generation of a scene, you know, take a video and spread over time and within a few seconds you can see what you want to do. Telling stories, able to motivate learners with videos, uh, historical footage, multimedia presentation, uh, visual representation, uh, demonstration. Videos are very helpful in this case. <coughs> The typology of video production style, according to Hans, so he says that most of these videos you will use actually will be a talking head, so probably your dad and you're talking about it, uh, which is good for whatever appropriate use of it. Uh, presentation slides where you just voice over, so you're explaining using only your voice without your presence. Uh, some of you may prefer that you know the text is there, the PowerPoint is there, and your video is there. So, for whatever reason, you see my only gestures is to be more than Or is it necessary? Or is it necessary? Uh, you are speaking there as a main figure, and then your PowerPoint appears over here. And all this can be done easily. Uh, some of us can use the Khan style tablet where you write for it and it's all uh, recorded. This is where Dr. Liu will show us hands on, and you by tomorrow will be able to do all this. Audacity uh, style, also the same, so real writing and being recorded. You may prefer a whiteboard and write and then the <coughs> video, and put your smartphone there, and this way of the panel is very good from this. Okay. It's also a good presentation. <coughs> Screen task. Your screen, whatever is on the screen, is recorded, okay, as a video, or use certain type of uh, animation, like how to do it. Your classroom can also be recorded, okay, or if you have a seminar or an interview. So, these are some of the typology of actually video production style that you can use to support the presentation. Competition, uh, live video, webcam capture. <coughs> so, whatever that we do, whatever that we use, so more than that, of course, whenever you go field trip and so on, experiment, demonstration, so it's all in the game. Whatever that we do, according to media, it says people learn better from multimedia messages, only some multimedia. In ways that are consistent with how the human mind works. And we research based principle. So that's when you talk about the 12 or design principles, as well as this model. So bear in mind all the time that goes you know, together. Okay, so we are going to call excuse number one. Offenses. Increasing extraneous processing, increasing property growth. Just remember, uh, as a very general definition. Uh, for optimum information processing, uh, there must be a large capacity over there. So if there are extra load, overload, then certain important essential information might not be processed. So we have to decrease what we think of. So there yeah, are three of them. Hey, I kill number one. Sapatu, in here. This is accused number one. Your diagram of the brain is here, your label A, B, apply to A. See? Wait, apply to E. Oh, see? Me? So, the way you label your diagram, A, accuse number one, you are accused of increasing extraneous processing, hence increasing cognitive load in learners. Because of that, the students are not learning better. Not optimal for learning. I'll be calling the expert witness. Hey, Professor Richard Mayer, what do you say of this? And then Richard Mayer will say, Oh, 
It is a fungus spatial conjugative principle. We don't worry about the term too much, huh? okay? Ah, and Richard Mayer is saying, Patoke argue label, Pagini. People learn better when corresponding words and pictures, now words and pictures, are presented near, rather than far. I think it's called far from each other on the screen. Screen is very small, you know. Relatively, far is down there, you know. <laughs> it can be really far, relatively. Anyway, to back all these are uh, tens of thousands of experiments done all over the world. Okay? And man market. So, some evidences uh, by researchers. So, rationale, people may focus on the Peter words rather than the relevant portion of the graphic. So, there is just a simple illustration here on text. But if it's more complicated text, diagram, okay? so they might not be able to actually match them. They might be staying focused on another part of the text. <coughs> you are accused of increasing extra years processing and hence increasing cognitive load in learners. Hey, jury! Guilty, right? Guilty. guilty. Okay, those who say guilty for the hand. Not guilty. But unanimous, huh? Unanimous. Wonderful. Okay? So you hey, go to jail. Tamo. Tamo pakai bagini. Sa boli boli. But again, as I say, okay, there can be an exception to the rule. For whatever reason, in the own vida, you may need to do this. And because there is exception to the rule, that is where, if you do that as a research, with exception to the rule, it will become a good research. <coughs> ah, accused number two. Ah, they are in it. Labor, no all given, all, all within. You are accused of increasing extra years processing and hence increasing quantity work in learners. Guilty or not guilty? No guilty, huh? Guilty? Don't say guilty. 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 Two. Not guilty. Majority. The label, the description, the card. Somehow. Uh, when you look at this, try to reflect not upon the old Vida, but of course, you know, this also applies to primary school level, secondary school level, school children. But it can also apply to us. Number three, you are accused of increasing extraneous processing and hand increasing collective load in others. Ah. And the thing is by the side that guilty or not guilty? Guilty, yeah. Hey, you people are already expert already concerning the uh, quality group. <laughs> ah, come on. <clears throat> hey, you are accused of increasing extra news processing and hence increasing cognitive load. You have violated something called the redundancy principle. So, what is this? This one, the lecturer showing a video and then the text over here, bears enjoy eating honey and they are also narrating bears enjoy eating honey. So the video, the text is there and the ear is hearing also the same thing. What does Richard Mayer say? You see, this is called redundancy principle. Ah. People learn better from graphic and narration than from graphic, narration, and text. Animation, other text, other narration. So, according to Mayer and many research work, compared to just animation and just text, no narration. Oh, no. Uh, animation and just narration. The other text are not. So when you look at actually the module again, you will understand. Because the channel there is limited by the capacity. If you are looking at the animation, 
And now you're also looking at the text. You know what I mean? So when it becomes complicated and too long, it becomes overlooked. Okay, so Bema. People they focus on printed words rather than the relevant portion of the graphic. And now my son and my students, by the way, uh, I was in the uh, USN from Pusat Pamaja Timbuk in the Dekan. But here I'm in uh, West Com. <coughs> He's my student, Zadra. Okay. Uh, another student of mine from Jordan. Usama was my student, you know. Usama, he came here. <laughs> <laughs> and this Usama, he says that I want to go to America, but we start somehow we will get these people are very rich. So they cannot enter. And they come to Malaysia somehow. It is teach music. So uh, what does he do? In fact, the modernity and redundancy principle, the attitude and learning of music theory. Something else. So it can be applied to all be done. All be done. Huh? Guilty or not guilty? Hey, congratulations, Judas. If you follow that now, again, as I say, within you, you may differ. You, you may not agree. Okay? For whatever reason. <coughs> but these are empirical evidence. <coughs> Another one. Segmenting principle. Increasing essential processing. Okay. Number five. This one is actually a video clip. Animation. On uh, on the cell, very complicated. How one cell can become uh, two cell can become four cell, and so on. That's a virus, How very complicated. And so to Richard Mayer again, <coughs> people learn better from multimeter lesson. It is presented in learner pay segment rather than as a continuous unit. So remember, five minutes, ten minutes, continuously might be too long. You know? have to change it into segment. So segment by segment. Then they look at it. They have the, under learner control, we call it play, pause, replay. These notes uh, you can go back and read. And this area also, my students with me, uh, Lily, she did it something to do with chemistry, uh, electrolysis. Uh, this one. And as I said, uh, even my PhD also, I see my PhD is in considering animation of meiosis. The time I created uh, the animation for meiosis, and this I'm studying. I was a biology teacher. Okay, a biology teacher. <coughs> hey, dear Nini, one whole long video. Huh? Guilty or not? Guilty. <laughs> okay, huh? huh? <coughs> so, be careful. Huh? Segment up your video. <laughs> But you may have reason why you want it to be 30 minutes, you know, sometimes. For whatever reason. Because uh, the continuity needs to be there for whatever reason. Okay? So, principles for reducing extraneous processing. Uh, the extraneous processing bring in continuity load. And the moment it's overloaded, the information cannot be processed optimally. That's the idea. So we want to reduce it, to reduce. <coughs> so there's something called coherence principle, signaling principle, and temporal quality principle. Uh, again, the notes are given to you. you read, huh? So <coughs> this one primarily means extra words, pictures, and sounds must be excluded. Anything that's extra. 
and there are a lot of uh, evidences. Uh, temporal continuity, it means that if there's any visual, there's any uh, text or any duration, it must be presented at uh, a certain time. It must be simultaneously so that uh, they can come into the working brain with that and then they can uh, associate. Preferring principle, modality principle, so before you start the class, you know, something new topic, you may want to tell the students some still have to do, some definition to do. So they have to when they go in, uh, they can follow down the road. And modality principle, people learn better from animation with narration, better than animation and on screen text. Animation and text. Overload. Overload. Okay. Okay, then, you know, those are small little things, but uh, when you produce, especially your learning materials later on, then my point is here. Personalization principle. People learn better from multiple lessons when words are in conversational style rather than the formal style. So, when you narrate, uh, hey, try to be cocoa informal. I lost this power that. Uh, the humanistic aspect huh, needs to be there. You need to humanize the hey, learning of you know, without much of learning from the machine. Especially, you know, some people like huh, you, you know, this chrome talk. Where you just, nowadays, I am so lazy to read you now sometimes. I just uh, use the chrome talk. Huh? It was introduced to me by Dr. Ken. So now, because very lazy already, I click and write down for it and just listen. I don't need to read not. <laughs> I bless my hands. Did we use it before? Sometimes you're tired and your eyes are. Huh? So, you just let it read for you anything on the screen. I think Dr. Keller is up to look and show it. <laughs> Thank you, it's useful for me. This one is a uh, one of my students from China, in US and Now also Now, so deep back in China as a lecturer. <coughs> These people, when it came to me, he hold a dictionary of the electron dictionary and he talked to me and after the one uh, and uh, see the translation uh, to, uh, I mean the meaning of it. And they tell me something and then I show you uh, this one. I mean. <laughs> so speaking to me uh, to whatever. At the end of two years, speaking fluent English uh, and she won her best thesis of what I did. <laughs> In English, some people are really smart. <laughs> the use of technology now to support her. So she did on this, and she did in Mandarin, uh, something on Mandarin. Okay. So what I'm showing you what uh, is that uh, all these principles from here they can be applied to uh, marine discipline across all disciplines. So uh, during the free time, please go to this. Embodiment principle, okay, voice principle, human voice better than mechanical voice. Okay. Uh, embodiment principle, sometimes uh, hey, having an avatar there, having uh, something moving there, having a, a professor there, you know, with a cartoon there, it may help, you know, depending on the targeted group, depending on the targeted audience, of course. Maybe your face should be there. But if your face is there for one hour, a lot of research power, hey, problem. <laughs> they tend to say, uh, I, uh, I think Dr. Kelly today is wearing the wrong color. Uh. <laughs> They'll be looking at something else there. <laughs> hey, what happened to your shirt or whatever? Okay. Okay, what? People do not necessarily learn better from the market with the lesson when the speaker's image is added to the screen. So I think uh, this afternoon, Dr. Kelly will show you a way to record your own lecture. And what is going to teach you today or show you today, please apply it almost immediately, immediately, and come up with a short, short, uh, a little clip of this, the recording. We are in the process at the moment of uh, your electronic content, public, uh, things that you produce. Satara and that publication. They're working on it. So please continue to start doing it.
and all the things that you build up later on you'll be compound you become uh, equivalent to a textbook and so on <coughs> again as I say the challenge is the status quo because any of our lecturers in promotion uh, they are looking for publication but some of our lecturers are very good in dancing I cannot dance but I can dance and really World class ended. That would end up like a promotion. You know what I mean? So there's something wrong with the system. You must challenge the status quo of the system. So now we're saying no. Their video or their dancing can be also be equivalent to a textbook. We're demanding that now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> We are all educators, you know. So uh, in Malaysia, there is an award uh, called as uh, AAN, Andukara Academic Nagara. Uh, you win that, you get fifty thousand dollars. Okay. But there one other one condition now it is uh, they give a time period there, so but working for a number of years. Uh. But whatever it is, hey, start collecting. Whatever that you start doing now, do you know what you did yesterday? Is all uh, collected as part of your CV, you know. Everything, everything that you do is collected as a CV. So when you go for Kalaka Panka promotion, you bring everything, you know, what you did yesterday also. What you do from Dr. Kenneth and E, keep it, please. Very well. Everybody, you owe how many kopi, a chawan kopi, but you know. Okay, really, really. It's going to show you something very, very important. And uh, we are going to legalize it. You see, this is a okay. okay, so anyway, it's a summary. Go back to this, okay? This is something that I did in the USM, and actually, it oh, again, it does not comply to coherence principle, okay? So, after telling you, you know, about mayor punya principle, okay, I'm telling you there are exceptions to the rule. They are. If you can justify it, you can win some competition. So, example, uh, I did something called uh, e-pronounce. Okay. It's still available. Now you can go in later on. Uh, you can register. It's available. It's to help people to pronounce English or okay. Especially here, the problem statement uh, for this uh, grant was actually very simple. It's the FIGS grant. We were saying that in Malaysia, multi-cultural, uh, multi-racial, so when we speak English, all of us are speaking it and pronouncing it differently. The Indian, the Malay, the Chinese, the Dusun, they are all we are producing, are pronouncing it differently. Why? Because we are affected by the mother tongue. Now, is there a way to standardize our pronunciation? We found that, hey, there is a way. Use phonetic symbol. Why do you symbols? Behind the dictionary, you look at dictionary, behind every word, there are some funny symbols done. Actually, the funny symbols, only 40 of them only. And if you can master that, you can master uh, correct pronunciation. <coughs> ah, okay, so that's how I got the grant. See, uh, problem statement, and then how to solve it. Using technology, of course. Of course, you want to right people. Uh. So, for example, this one is uh, Dr. Paul now. Uh, my PhD student at that time. Ah. So next time when you have your PhD student, when you get a grant uh, and bring them along, then they get their PhD and you get your grant done also. Maybe not, uh, maybe not. Uh. Then you bring in the right people. Uh. Whatever this is a speech therapist, Dr. Mm -hmm. Poon, now a lecturer in BIP. BIP is Pusat Pengajian Timbo Pendidikan University. When I think a phonology expert, Dr. Jamina, also my colleague, uh, Dr. Shukri Curriculum, and Professor Emma, the elementary education. So get the right people from the team. Even now, you know, when you're young, get yourself attached to some people. <coughs> Another one, okay. Now, look over this. Okay, what is this? Kalau, I, I got another FRGS, and the way that I got the Ghana was very simple, you know. During the presentation, I asked the jury, uh, the panel, 
Sorry lah, apa kerti ini lah. A death in some person, you know. Nah, I suddenly come to you. What do you understand? What do you understand? What do you understand? Very good, of course, very good. Happy, happy. Ask me for money. Ask me for money. I can't watch it. Ask me for money. How are you? How are you? How are you? Huh? Oh, best, best, best. Sign. Good, and then, huh? Rude. Okay, sometimes we say it's rude, yeah. So, different, different culture again. Okay. Imagine, uh, I was running to you with this, because uh, I was somewhere just now, the owner, and I cannot walk. Somebody come and take away my money. So I come to you. Oh, wrong! Oh, wrong! <laughs> I take the wrong! And you're saying very good. <laughs> the death and the heart of killing community communicate using sign languages. Rights of death and heart of killing communities are neglected. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, we are having normal hearing. We are somehow unfortunate right now to be over normal and little communication. But uh, those people, they're trying to communicate with their parents. So who are the illiterates of sign languages? The parents. Me. You. We. We are the people actually. So the deaf and dumb actually are just a small community. All the time you can see them, you know, the parents sitting together happily making all these signs. Nobody else can understand them. Except those people who know our uh, Sabi Shabbat. So that's how I got the FIGF grant also for saying that we need to actually help to get ourselves. The illiterate, we are the illiterate. <laughs> okay, so one of the ways to get grant, look at real problems. <coughs> And actually, this is also available even now. It's still there. Dr. Chandra, my PhD student. Again, okay, you know, we bring in PhD student, then they get a PhD at the end. Dr. Asnan, sign special education, Bahasa sign, Ishara sign, when you expert in the US. And another PhD student. <coughs> Again, uh, sorry, I, I come with this because I want to say the main punya design principle are the exception. So I got exception to here. I didn't follow. I break the rule and I got reason why. Yeah? Yeah, so Thank you, Julie. <laughs>